Welcome to the 2024 Trade Deadline Recap Show here on Locked On Senators, where I'm joined by the whole postcast crew for the first time in a while, Brandon Piller and the Martian at Laleem's Martian on Twitter, joining us right here as the clock strikes midnight on trading season in the National Hockey League. Looks like some deals still left to be finished pending a trade call, maybe the biggest trade of the day, but we'll start with Pilsy's thoughts on the process for steady Stevie Steos who makes zero trades today but does pick up Boris Kachuk on waivers yeah well it's not the uh, juiciest of topics for us to dive into but at least there's something here that we can get into as it retains to the Ottawa Senators but overall this has been a kind of a weird trade deadline I don't know about you guys and what the chat feels like but the value for players has gone down significantly based on what we're used to seeing. Like I feel like in past trade deadlines, fourth, fifth and sixth and seventh round picks, we're not even bothered with like it, it was either you're moving a first, second or third or multiple of those higher uh, round draft picks at the deadline. But the going price for players seems to be very cheap these days because the cap hit, everyone is so strapped for cap that the only way you're going to move guys is if you're willing to accept terrible deals for teams kind of taking on that money and uh, teams that thought they could hold out for better prices ultimately caved and allowed these rental players to go for much cheaper. And if you're a contending team GM, you got to be stoked about how this day went. I think those GMs did a lot more for a lot less than they probably anticipated. Eh, Martian? Yeah, you said it, man. The the returns weren't weren't there, and and maybe that's the thought process for Stevie Steos in this whole thing, right? Sometimes the the best trades you can make are the ones that you don't end up making, and I think there were probably obviously a few players that Ottawa was looking to try to maybe move out of town, but if you're not going to get the return that you're looking for for those guys, then then what's the point? So, um, guys like Brandstrom, and I, I, you know, you you heard the rumors about his name getting floated out there, and then and then Chikrin, of course, being on the on the trade boards pretty high there as well. You want to make sure you get a solid return for a guy like that. So um, maybe uh, holding steady is the is the playbook for play, uh, Steos here on this one. Um, we still do have a little bit of time. Uh, sometimes those trades do trickle in at the end, uh, yeah. you know, after the deadline hits for those trade calls to actually come through. So maybe there's still something there. I doubt it, but. Um, yeah, he just kind of, you know, held the line there on this one, and and that's fine. Uh, if you're not getting what you want, then then why bother? I mean, you, you don't. I mean, Kubalik's the only UFA really that they could have moved out that they probably wanted to get assets for, and um, obviously other teams just weren't interested. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. And otherwise, the two pieces that were in play on the TSN trade bait board: Jacob Chikrin, who has a year left at four point six. And Eric Brandstrom was a restricted free agent, so they still hold the rights to those two players beyond this season. Mark Kastelik, another one with one year left at a minimum salary. So this is probably him just punting the rest of the season and getting a, a, a warm body in Boris Kachuk. No disrespect, but Alex says it best here. Boris Kachuk, basically this year's Patty Brown. Just put him wherever in the lineup and... If he scores a goal, wow, wouldn't that be just something special? But really, it just allows the Ottawa Senators to keep some of these kids down in Belleville. And I'm curious to see if there's a paper transaction for a guy like Yuri Smekal, because I believe that you have to be on an AHL roster at the trade deadline to be eligible for playoffs. And we know that there's a few guys up here from Belleville right now, and you wonder, um, you wonder what uh, the play is right now. And it looks like, yes. Uh, Yuri Smekal, Max Gannett, and Rook Chartier were all papered. This nice. is according to the AHL.com transactions page. So went right to the source for that. So those three guys will be eligible for AHL playoffs. And you wonder, because Matt Highmore is injured, if, if you can't be sent down when you're an injured player. So I wonder how that's going to affect his status there. But uh, So there you have it. Gannett, Chartier, and Smekal can all play for Belleville in the playoffs. We're going to hear from Steve Steos sooner rather than later. And if we're able to take that live, we will. Otherwise we'll make sure to get you the most important quotes. But I think Martian said it best, Pilsy, where it's just like, you don't have to make a trade just because there's a deadline. And if the prices weren't what they needed to be, then just hold on and wait till the summer where you have 31 other general managers who think they can improve their team rather than what it seems like was eight to 10 who are really going for it all in. 
Yeah, the only player that I would take exception to that would be Dominic Kubelik. I think it would have been better for him, better for the team, better for everyone just to move on from him. Honestly, even if it's future considerations, it just seemed like things weren't working out here. But I get if you're Steve Steos, you don't want your first two trades to be an uh, underwhelming return for Tarasenko and then <laughs> future considerations for the roster player that came back in the Dabrinka deal. So that's fair, I guess, but... Just with the way returns were happening here, it doesn't make sense to move a guy like Eric Branstrom. Regardless of how highly regarded he is by this management, he's still an RFA under team control, so you might as well try your hand with that. Maybe you got a depth defenseman for a good deal. Um, and Eric Branstrom, believe it or not, has a bunch of NHL experience now, so at least that's a guy that can play on your, on your third pair. JBD's name was tossed around a, a lot, too. Again, based on what the returns were, didn't make sense to move him, especially since um, he is also an RFA after this year. And then Mark Kaslick was another guy we talked about, but he, he's on a good deal, uh, another $800,000 this year and next year. So didn't make sense to move him either. So I, I guess the only real option here for Steve Steos was possibly making a big splash with Jacob Chikrin, but it seemed that the Tampa Bay Lightning either wanted to go all the way for the moon with Noah Hannafin. When that didn't work out, they're just like, let's try to do kind of a, a safe bunt here with Matt Dumba at a cheap price. Because Jacob Chicken was not going to be at a cheap price like that. But one thing, and maybe we can get into this later, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, the reports are that there was a deal with Linus Allmark in you the mix. You read my mind, Pelsey. He nixed it because of geographical decisions or i forget what the terminology was but i don't know that's that's <laughs> that smells an awful lot like the ottawa senators well yeah. fellas i, I want to talk about pilsey's favorite moment of the day when the ottawa senators mock draft on tsn's trade yeah. center got second <laughs> overall that's that's exactly and ross the cherry on top they got my guy's Zane pair craig button went with that so looks good to me that just made the day for you, didn't it? I mean, it, at least it, it was validating and it, we were able to make a moment out of it. And those people that have followed along with the postcast and are on to my half bit, half serious take uh, got to have a little laugh there. So, but hey, I mean, second overall, that would be incredible regardless of the circumstances. Like if you can get second overall, that's a big deal. And that would be Steve Steos, kind of the hockey gods being like, You've dealt with a lot of crap so far. Here you go. You you get yeah. to win at least win a, a fake. consolation prize in the draft lottery. Well, a fake draft lottery that was done by a network on TV. Martian, I'm convinced that the TSN broadcast did that to appease to Ottawa fans and that it was all rigged. And for Pooley. And yeah, for Pooley. they knew we were watching and that we didn't yeah. really have much to pay attention to. You know, there was there's was nothing really happening in the in the world of the sense. So maybe you're right. I think they might have just thrown us a bone there, Ross. That is so funny. Uh, in about 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to get a report from a diehard Chicago Blackhawks fan about Bar Boris Kachuk. I know everybody's going to stay tuned for that. Our guy, Skylar Peters from 680 CJOB in Winnipeg. Yes. Great, great guy. Going to make his uh, LOSP debut. He texted me at 2.30 in the morning and said, the fact that you guys have 130 people watching a postcast after a loss on a Thursday night in California, you guys are freaks. And uh, the yeah. citizens, we appreciate you guys so much as well. And we're going to get to a league roundup. Uh, and I've got some questions for the fellas about which division is most important to win, which 2-3 matchup is going to be just hell to pay and maybe like the old sends Leafs where yeah the Leafs would win the series but they'd never win the next one because they were so beat up from such a tough battle that they saw but I'll start it like this Boris Kachuk you putting him I guess third line fourth line where do you expect him to start as an Ottawa Senator Martian well no the entire internet wants him to play with Brady Kachuk so let's just throw him on the right wing on that uh, first line I guess uh I know that's that's just all tongue in cheek and kind of joking around because they got such similar names, but yeah, I mean he's he's a fourth line player, so he's probably going to be playing in that bottom six uh, left wing role there somewhere. Who knows? I mean, I like his game. I, I've I've you know I've always noticed him when he when he was playing with Tampa. You know, he was playing against Ottawa quite a bit. 
Um, I even noticed him in the in the games against Ottawa when they were playing against uh, Chicago this year. He's a grit grinder, right, boys? Like he's a physical player. He's a big body. He bangs it around. He's got a little bit of a scoring touch, I guess you could say. I mean, when it, when you look at a fourth liner, you know, five goals and four assists. That's you know, in 38 games, that's not terrible. Um, so he, he's a try hard, right? That's what you're going to get out of him. And and it, and I like his age too, right? He's 25. He's not he's not too old. He's not too young. He's kind of just like right in that, you know, he fits uh, the age group that the Sens are working with here. So, uh, you know, it's, it's unlikely that he's probably going to be here next year. But uh, for the end of this year, at least, he should be a decent fit with the group. And they obviously need depth. So, um, you know, Tarasenko out and Kachuk in. Here we go. Well, he's going to be a RFA at the end of the year, too, which I don't think is insignificant. Do they have to qualify him? No. But they have the opportunity to keep him for another year if they want to move on from some other guys in the bottom six. and. This is a, like like we said last year. I guess it was a UFA situation with Patty Brown, but you're you're taking it. This is the test run that Steos was saying, where it's like taking we're gonna take a guy for, take him for a spin, and instead of even giving up a sixth or seventh round pick, which was kind of the going rate for depth forwards, depth defenseman this year, you just take him for free off a of waiver. So low risk masterclass sure. by Ma- Steve hey, Steos. Steve Steos masterclass right there. Who needs Vladimir Tarasenko when you can get Boris Kachuk? I was surprised that this was the waiver pickup they made and also the only waiver wire pickup. I I thought there could have been a couple other options, maybe some guys on uh, defense that would have been interesting as well. Um, Are you saying Tony D'Angelo, Pilsen? No, that's not where I'm going. Um, But just, just the fact that this team has so many injuries and the fact that Belleville is legitimately making a, a strong playoff push. Like you want to keep those guys in there. You want to help the the prospects feel like they're able to have some time in the postseason, And just to get a, an ounce of respect for this franchise. I mean, low bar trying to get your AHL team to the playoffs, but it's all we got right now. It's all we got. <laughs> really? That's, that's the message you're going to send the citizens here who just saw the Ottawa Senators win second in the in the lottery in the fake lottery on TSN you're gonna say well, I, this is all we got in the immediate future as far okay. as hockey on the ice goes yep. that's that's what we got here okay it's well, not I, fresh, but it's something yeah I know that the first round of the playoffs is going to be a ton of fun even sitting on the sidelines being a cheerleader oh, yeah. for it like there's gonna be the some un, unbelievable matchups and Boris Kachuk 38 games this year five goals four assists 52 shots on goal in 38 games while averaging 1227. That's a nice little stat there. I had to get uh I had to get going. Um, he was also, you know, a guy who coming up had a ton of offensive skill. If you look at his numbers in Sault Ste. Marie as well, he was, I, I believe, a higher pick. Am I am I wrong in saying that? I want to say he went in the first couple rounds. Uh, pulling that up right yeah, now. Second yeah, second round. round pick in, in 2016. Yeah. Um, played played on a really good Syracuse Crunch team for a couple of years and then was able to establish himself in Chicago the last couple of years. He did play a, a handful of games in Rockford, which I found interesting uh, this year as well. AHL affiliate for Chicago, five points in six games. Like, kind of, he, he almost reminds me a bit like Matthew Highmore, right? Like, if he's playing at the AHL level, he can, yeah. he can put up a lot of points and We'll see what he can do at the NHL level, but I think we've covered our basis on at least the profile of, of Boris Kachuk. And uh, I think it was Caleb on Twitter who said, oh, oops, wrong one. Sorry, Martian. There you go. Um, hey. Boris Kachuk um, was was able to kind of, you know, step up in certain situations and have some high skill plays. But uh, if we could get him on a line with Kachuk and how about getting a, a stab chuck in there? The old Kachuk, Kachuk, well, a stab chuck. I- and Ross, correct me if I'm wrong, but this isn't the first Kachuk Kachuk situation we've had. They played on the U.S. World Junior Team together, did they not? Canada. Oh uh, yes, no, he, sorry, yeah. He played. He played with Canadian. Batherson. But yeah, I remember there was games where it was Kachuk versus Kachuk, wasn't there? Yes, there would yeah. have been. Because I outdoor remember game. this confusion before the outdoor game we went to, Pelzi and Buffalo. Yes. I remember them. They got they got into it a couple times too in the NHL, I believe. Is I think there was I, I don't know wh- why this is in my head. Brady but, would get mixed up with Boris Kachuk in the yeah, NHL. I, that would happen. If I'm not mistaken, there was a, 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 I don't I don't remember the incident, so I might be wrong. But there was something going on where Kachuk did something, and then there was a scrum, and it was Kachuk Kachuk. Well, I'm watching right now on uh, on Reddit. There's a video where 
Um, Boris Kachuk, and like his goals are like pr- pretty talented goals, I'll say. Um, and then you know what he does with two minutes left in the second period on the road gives one of these. Nice. Why? Why aren't you guys? Why aren't you guys talking anymore? <laughs> Can't hear you. Oh my goodness, we've got another trade trickling in. Should we get to to the trades of the day? And why don't we start with the ones that are just happening? Thomas Hurdle going to the Vegas Golden Knights. Nuts. They they are literally building an NHL franchise mode situation. It's unbelievable. But but D- how Dylan, are they gonna? Go our guy Magnus Helberg to the Florida Panthers. I like that Flor- Florida stocking up here. Um, but how are the Vegas Golden Knights going to afford Hurdle? I know there's salary retention, but this isn't a trade deadline rental uh, circumnavigating the salary cap for playoffs with LTIR. This guy signed, I think, for another six years. I'm not a capologist, so don't ask me, Pilsy. I don't know. Those guys always find a way to make things work. Uh, I don't. They're they're magicians with the cap and and bringing in all these star names. Uh, I said it earlier, but it must be really fun to be a Golden Knights fan to watch all these star players coming to your team. Um, you know, with the Hannafin pickup that they just had and now Hurdle, like those are two really really strong players that they're adding to an already really good lineup. So it's it's got to be fun for them. You you know they're going to go pretty deep. That's not a matchup that I'd be looking forward to if I was a team in their division right now. That's for sure. No, no doubt. And uh, if you're looking ahead to the summer, because they're going to have to move on from some players, 34 years old, closer to home, Stanley Cup experience, Colin Smythe winner. What do you guys think about the Sens showing interest in maybe a Jonathan Marcheseau? Well, you know for a fact that Vegas is going to get rid of a guy that doesn't deserve to get shipped out. <laughs> they're they're going to be like, all right, thank you for your service. You've been great. I know your original expansion pick and you won the con Smythe and you've been a big part of this team. But we found a younger, better version of you. So see you later. Uh, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Like that, It's definitely going to be one of those top guys. It has to be. But obviously Marshall show would be a great addition to any team. I'd love to have him on the senators, but it just seems like another one of those scenarios where it's, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. Like how, how much is left on his deal? Is this, is it no, he's a UFA? Yeah. Yes. So what, you think if, if it does happen, it's a one year deal with a full no move clause. Yeah, Vegas has no loyalty to their guys. <laughs> I no. mean, Marcus has been there for a good good amount of time. Was he an expansion pickup? I believe he yeah. was. So yeah, he there. was. Well, they had to say bye to Riley Smith, right? Yeah, so he's been there since the beginning. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I don't. I mean, it could happen. Luckily, they don't have to make a trade with Vegas because that's something that I probably wouldn't see coming. Um, just with the history with the Dadanov thing and everything like that, to get a guy like Marcus Mark Stone, Stone I mean, trade didn't work name, out. Right? Like, He's a great player. Yeah, he's local-ish, so it um, could be interesting. But I, I think it would be a perfect like uh, complimentary piece and even a guy who could probably play on your third line at that point, right, if you're going to balance it out and have Giroux on one. have Anyways, it's a long way away, and there's going to be changes. It's almost hard to even pencil guys into next year's lineup, and yeah. I think that when, when, you're, when you're looking at the Ottawa Senators right now, oh, and by the way, we've got the trade return. For yeah, I've got, Hurdle. I've got it right here too. If you, so they've got to get him in at six point seven five million. Great cap hit for Hurdle. They get uh, they get a first round pick in twenty twenty five. San Jose does. They get Vegas's first round pick from this past draft. David Edstrom. We were high on him, Pilsy. Yep. And then two third round picks. That's that's a good haul. Uh, How many like... first round picks that they've made the selection has Vegas traded? So many. Zach Dean to St. Louis last year was first round pick. Okay. David Edstrom, Eric Brandstrom, Nick Suzuki, Cody Glass. What Peyton combined? Krebs. Peyton Krebs, yeah. So <laughs> that's a lot. That's like, the, every year. Of their... That's almost every year. Yeah. They're the probably the people who want to decentralize the draft. They're like, we don't have to give these kids a jersey. They're never going to wear it. Yeah, but make sure you do the draft in our town. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, the hotels are really needing the business. So if you could please yeah. help us out, that would be great. Oh, my goodness. Um, I will say they're going to be must-watch TV down the stretch. Absolutely. And you know what? Like, for all the people that are like, oh, man, how does Vegas keep getting away with this, blah, blah, blah. I love this. Like, the NHL needs a villain, non-traditional franchise to 
to muddy the waters a little bit, to roll around in the mud. Like it, they need that. And it's, it's fun to watch and say what you want, but they're good. They just, they're the reigning Stanley cup champions and they make hockey exciting, whether you love them or hate them. It's, it's also fun to hate a franchise collectively. So I, I think it's great. Yeah. It'd be a lot cooler if Ottawa had more than one win in 12 games all time against the Vegas Golden Knights. So they make the biggest splash of the trade deadline. On the other side, we'll get into more of what the Senators didn't do and which division is most critical to finish first overall because these two, three matchups all over the place, not going to be easy. That's all coming up next. You're listening to a bonus live edition of Locked On Senators where it's your team every day. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at Factor. Guys, are you sick of trying to figure out what you're trying to have for dinner? I was having this exact problem today. I was, my girlfriend and I were trying to figure out, okay, what's the way we can have a healthy dinner that's not going to take too long to make, not going to cost too much, and your head just starts spinning and you get frustrated? Well, get rid of that and get started with Factor. Skip the grocery stores, skip the prep work, skip the cooking fatigue, skip the stressful, what are we doing for dinner texts at 4 p.m. Factor has you covered. They offer two-minute meals. You got That's your secret weapon for the year. They got lots of snack options, breakfast, smoothies, juices, whatever you like. So skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. You can get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door, ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. Need a special occasion meal? You want to get a little more fancy? Well, they got Gourmet Plus if you're looking for upscale options. Not only do they offer fast, simple solutions when you're too busy to cook, but they help you stay on top of your goals with healthy options as well. So head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% 50% off. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL to get 50% off. Check it out today, guys. Factor. This episode is also brought to you by Indeed. If you are building a team, you need Indeed. And whether it's sports or business, you always want the top candidates. And at Indeed, it's the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must have job requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites, finding hours and hours and hours going to waste, go to Indeed and find their powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you every step of the hiring process from matching, assessments, and virtual interviews. Indeed makes it easy to hire great talent. According to Comscore, Indeed is the number one job site worldwide. And Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined according to Talent Nest in 2019. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer is valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need. Indeed. All right. Welcome back to the live 2024 trade deadline recap where the Ottawa Senators were very quiet, eerily quiet, not only by making just the one trade, sending Vladimir Tarasenko to his preferred destination of Florida for a third and a conditional fourth round pick, but claiming Boris Kachuk off of waivers. Marsh in the streets have been pretty quiet of late. Hey. Yeah. I mean, and, well, the Sens haven't done much, so that's probably a lot to do with it. When there's no news to to come down to the streets, um, that's what you're going to get. So it makes sense that they're quiet since uh, nothing's happening. <laughs> Pilsy, what's what's the play to finish the year? Like, would you be bringing up some of the kids? Would you be bringing up an Angus Crookshank right now or someone else? Or are you just letting it ride with Boris Kachuk, Parker Kelly, Mark Kastelik, and Boris Kachuk, all or sorry, Dominic Kubelik, all in the same lineup. I mean, I th- I think you have to. You ca- you can't be ruining Belleville's chances of, of making playoffs. And I know maybe some some people are like, who who cares about that? It's all about the NHL team. You got to try to put the best product on the ice or give guys like Crooker chances to play in the NHL and stuff like that. And that that's fine. I can appreciate that opinion, but. 
it just feels like every time we've had discussions uh, with people on the show about how important it is to build the foundation blocks in the AHL to ultimately carry that success over to the NHL. I think that is the crucial part here because you need to build some sort of uh, chemistry and morale boost for these young prospects that the hard work they put in in Belleville is going to pay off and they're going to get to the playoffs. So personally, I I think you just leave all the kids in Belleville, let them do their thing and let the Ottawa Senators continue to truck along here and suffer through the rest of the season. Suffer is a great way to put it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you got to hope that a few of these guys, you know, make it eventually to the the, the big club, right? And, and going through a playoff run and hopefully having some success in that run could help, you know, bring up a little bit more of a winning culture, which is something that we're we're not seeing a lot uh, in Ottawa right now. So hopefully, the guys in Belleville can do some damage and then gain some confidence. And, and like you said, Pilsy, bring that to Ottawa. Uh, yeah, when they get the chance. Pilsy, what do you think the message from Steve Stavos is going to be when he speaks to the media this afternoon? I think it's going to be basically a repeat of his press conference in what was that Anaheim or was that in LA? The market dictates. Yeah. Like yeah. There, there wasn't a lot of options for him. Other teams had better low cost rental options here. I don't think he's looking to move assets just to move assets. Like I mentioned, I think the only one that would have made sense there was Dominic Kubalik. So this, this is tough. This is like, If Steve Steos could go back six months from now or however long it's been when he was brought onto this team, I can pretty much guarantee you he did not expect that this was going to be the trade deadline he was going to have. No, that's (laughs) that's that's a far cry from reality. And how do how do the players manage this? I think this might be a better question for math, but like a guy like Jacob Chicken, his name's been in the rumor mill. He was the fifth place player on the NHL trade bait board. Does he breathe a sigh of relief or is he still kind of gripping the stick being like, I got 20 games and then I'm going to have to go through this all over again in the summer. Yeah. I, I think Jacob Chikrin is probably in a weird spot right now. And it's got to be tough too. When you see Vladimir Tarasenko get shipped to his preferred destination, he gets to play on a top line in Florida, the arguably the best team in the NHL right now. Like, That's got to be tough. Like, obviously, part of you is like, well, like, I I don't want to leave here. You know, I've I've settled down here and stuff. But then another part of you is like, man, it would be an exciting breath of fresh air to be able to get out of here and go somewhere else. But uh, honestly, at this point, like Vladimir Tarasenko earned and deserved that right. I wouldn't say the same for for Jacob Chicken as of late. Yeah. And I mean, he's, he's got the experience, right. in Tarasenko, he's got the Stanley cup. He's older, all that. D- Jacob Chikrin doesn't even have his own decision to make after next year. He's still a restricted free agent. So they're going to be able to, you know, figure out something that works long-term. I'd imagine kind of more like not the quality of player, but more like Matthew Kachuk did when he was moved still as an RFA. Let's get a- around the league. Uh, Marsha, before we let you go, I want to ask you about, which division is going to be the most critical to win? When you look at the one, two, three situation in all these divisions, which one would you want to stay away from having to play the third ranked team? If you're a team that's battling for the top. Well, help me out. Pull up the standings for me here, Ross, just so I can, I can have a little quick visual here to see where everyone's at. Cause I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not look, I'm not used to looking that high up in the standings <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but I, I, I so yeah, we'll do we'll do the east first. We'll do the sure. east first. So Florida, I I mean it's still one point, but Florida we'll, does have a we'll game. Down in a hand. little bit to see the wild card teams because that plays an effect in this as well. Yeah, well the the, the east is kind of well, east, right? Because I mean you look at the metro, you, you know you you win that division, you, you're going to be facing you know one of these weaker teams. I feel like the metro is kind of an easy easier division, so I wouldn't say that one's necessarily the most important one to win. Um, so for the for the sake of the East, I would probably say that, you know the the Atlantic is is a little bit of a tougher division there. Um, if you're Toronto or Boston, there's not a great chance of you catching Florida after all their pickups and the way they've been going. So those two teams are going to have to face each other. So that's not a perfect scenario, I don't think, especially for Toronto with their history and their recent losses to Boston, the, the, you know, in the last two weeks or so. 
Um, so I, I would say in the East, I would go with uh, I would go with the Atlantic is the most important to win. And it looks like Florida's got that pretty much on lock, in my opinion. Although the Leafs have been rolling too, so they might be able to make some ground up, but I'm not too sure. Um, and then in, in, in the West, I mean, geez, man, both these conferences are strong, right? You- and I think you could probably go ahead and and push LA out and put Vegas in the top three. I know they've been struggling a little bit, and Thomas Hurdle is injured right now, expected yeah. to be back before playoffs, but that's not going to be a wild card team. No, they're they're going to be picking up steam at the perfect time for the playoffs here too. Man, I would hate to have to play the Jets. Um, and I, I, there's a good chance that they're going to catch the Stars too. I think too because they they made a couple nice acquisitions as well. I know the Stars did as well, but um, I think that I think the Dallas is is kind of in a tough spot there because if they get caught by Winnipeg, they're going to have to play Colorado, which is not uh, ideal. Obviously, they made a really nice trade during this deadline it was probably the only hockey trade that we saw made during this entire deadline it was in my opinion probably the most exciting trade too we get Bowen Byram going uh to Buffalo for Casey Middlestat it's a one for one two young guys who have shown success at this level so I, I I'd say for me it's 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 kind of if I had to pick a team I didn't want to be it would probably be Dallas right now even though it they're you know they're locked into a playoff spot, but who they play is going to be really important for how they do down the, down that run. Penalty. Yeah, I think uh, if you're in the Metro, you want to finish second. Uh, if Philly stays in that spot, I think you want to play the Flyers over uh, the Red Wings or the Tampa Bay Lightning. If you're in the Central. We talked about this in our Patreon episode, Ross. You do not want to play the Colorado Avalanche, especially. If you finish third in the Central and they finish second, their home and away records is night and day. Like their home record is absolutely amazing. Obviously, they they, they are probably the team with literally the best home ice advantage when it comes to the altitude. Uh, a lot of other teams are not used to playing in that altitude, especially if you're playing in the seven game series. When they're at home, they're killing it. And when Colorado's on the road, they're only only okay i think it's like 14 uh 14 and five records so for a team as good as the avalanche that's kind of an underwhelming record there whereas they're 25 and six at home so that's going to be huge another little wrinkle here and they talked about it on um trade center ross is for the winnipeg jets yeah obviously you're stoked about getting tyler defoley but he's coming from the new jersey devils us of a to Winnipeg, Canada, and a Friday deadline is is not great. No, it's all good. Why? You're because you're thinking of a Canadian going to the U.S. Tofoli's a Canadian citizen, so he can come up and work here anytime. He can. Okay, even though he was recently working in in yeah. the U.S. Okay, well, but the only pro- the know. problem for them is Winnipeg plays tonight in Seattle. Tonight, yeah, and then tomorrow in Vancouver and New Jersey to there. That's that's cross continental that's a tough place i think he's going to meet them back here and be in the lineup on monday in winnipeg so yeah no yeah. The, good good point though because that is a case for guys in the good um <laughs> good effort pilsey thanks good thanks, effort guys. thanks i tried <laughs> so some big trades today uh martian what are your final thoughts on the trade deadline uh as far as they go it, it was a bit of a snooze fest boys especially from our perspective covering the yeah. sends right like there was not really anything going on there i know you guys covered the tarasenko trade in depth already um so yeah for for me it was it was kind of a boring one i'm usually i get up for this one i usually get pretty excited for the trade deadline day love tossing on tsn in the background while i'm working all day and uh, it's usually fun to watch, but uh, I, I kind of feel bad for those guys that there wasn't a whole lot uh, going on in this one. Although there was a, that Thomas Hurdle trade at the end that might save them a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It, it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob McKenzie coming out of nowhere, too, and and just being like, all right, I'll, I'll just hit you with the biggest trade of the day and then back to uh, back to his homestead down back in to the Florida. Uh, Martian, yeah. great yeah. news, buddy. Tomorrow, you and me on the postcast, and uh, we Automatic got dub. we got four wins in a row, pal. Let's get five, buddy. We're sitting on four wins in a oh, row. I am on, I am on, I'm securely on Team Tank now, so maybe a loss. Win yes. It's a win-win for us, Ross. We get to either break down a great Sens win, or we get to uh, 
you know, enjoy the fruits of falling further down in the standings and hopefully getting a better draft pick here. Uh, I, I thought I can't believe I'm, I'm saying that. Um, you know, earlier in the earlier in the season at the at the start of the year, I I would have probably been very upset with myself for saying something like that. But this is where we're at. That's Aleem's Martian. You can follow him on Twitter at Aleem's Martian. Thanks for doing this, brother. We will see you tomorrow in see the post. Anytime, boys. Love you guys. Catch All you right. Later. Love you too, brother. Hey, say hi to Skyler for me, eh? My uh, my golf buddy. Oh yeah, you. He too. one time dragged me in for an extra extra nine holes when the rest of the boys bailed after nine. So I I I know Skyler pretty well. You get to know people well when you when you spend hours golfing with them. He was my. By partner. bailed, he means having to get ready for my own wedding. Is, uh, uh, is bailed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Different day. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Martian. Ross. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. That's Leems yeah. Martian. Make sure to go follow Look him on it. Twitter at Leems Martian. Peters is going to stop by in a few minutes as well. But uh, a little reset. You look at the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, the real story of the deadline in the last couple of days. They had Anthony Manta. They add Noah Hannafin, and they add. The big fish, Tom Ash Hurdle. A shark's a fish, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Let's ask our next guest here. Uh, Skylar Peter, 680 CJOB's hey. finest. I call him Mr. Everything. Shark's a fish, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't it be a fish, boys? No, no, no. It's a, a fish. fish. Okay. Because I said, eh, just out of kind of random, I just said they got the big fish at the deadline. Tom Ash Hurdle. Right. right. So I'm, I'm right on that. Big, uh, Nailed it. Big marine biologist myself. Um, so you're going to help us break down the biggest move of the day, Dude. Boris Kachuk. Yeah, for both uh, both teams involved, I guess too, because uh, yeah. ended up being pretty quiet for the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, you know, some guys that they thought maybe would go, the Colin Blackwells of the roster and stuff, uh, ended up not moving as well. So losing Kachuk, who was an extra at practice over the last couple of days for Chicago's, uh, you know, basically the only thing going out uh, after that trade yesterday. What uh, what is your scouting? on Boris Kachuk for Ottawa Senators fans that have only seen him when he comes in to play the Sens. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're going to have to plan a parade around this waiver wire pickup, boys. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, he's a guy that he was part of the Brandon Hagel trade uh, okay. when they sent him to the Bolts a couple of years ago. I'm sure you probably mentioned all this on the program already. But like the as a Blackhawks fan, the other than the two for. Oh. All right. I know that all too well. Go ahead. Oh, I think we got I think we got you muted there, Sky. I don't know if he can hear us. Nope, <laughs> I love should I we just let so. him roll? <laughs> I love this is probably this is probably the the um <laughs> Oh, there's so much information that we're missing out on right here. He's cooking. He's cooking right now. <laughs> I wonder if he's just covering his mic. This is all time live programming for you. We can't hear. I don't know if you can. Can you hear us? We can't hear you. I love it. I love. All right, and that was the Boris Kachuk uh, scouting report. That's the Boris Kachuk scouting report. He's had enough of us. Skyler's an absolute beauty, by the way. One of the best in the biz. Um, he really is great guy too. Uh, he'll jump back on if anyone's been there when I do the. uh, Yeah, can anybody lip read that? Can we get a lip reader on? There we go. He's back. We need the lip reader. (laughs) I don't know, boys. Nobody calls me all day on trade deadline day, and then I hop on one live Your big moment. And and the second that I hop on with you guys, somebody tries to call me and cuts me out. So <laughs> sorry, but uh, all good. Yeah. Let's uh, let's run it back on that Boris Kachuk scouting report. It, it well, looked like you had a lot to say, so we want to. Yeah, hear I, it. I'm uh, I'm going to be honest. I think the, the first take is probably going to be. I know this all too well. No, this... here is someone calling you again. They don't want us You're to know. A popular guy. <laughs> they don't want us to know. <laughs> this guy is killing me. <laughs> and the worst part is, Ross. He knows is, this time at least. Is he is he at work? Yeah. How does a radio station, a communications company, have the worst internet and cell service in the city of Winnipeg? It's it actually makes mind boggling. No Dude, this also happened in. Uh, this would be a way. But this would be a great bit. I wish we did this on purpose. And this is a bit. All right, we're bringing on Skyler. He's yeah. going to tell us all about the big waiver wire pickup. Go off, King. Does but nothing. It, we got. it almost it almost plays in. Skyler, we're just saying we'll give this one more try. We appreciate you, and we're saying because <laughs> I've done a postcast there after work, and it's like for a rate for a multimedia company, 
Not great Wi-Fi in there. I'm uh, I'm now off the Chorus Entertainment Wi-Fi, so okay. we'll, okay. we'll, we'll see what happens here, boys. But okay, third time's the charm, and yep. if I see Ross's lips moving and I don't hear anything, <laughs> this, this is, is a bit. This is a joke. You're this, done. This is a done. bit. It's over. This it's a over. bit. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> love you, Skyler. That's this is hilarious. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Basically, Boris Kachuk. I'm going to read you what he said to me when uh, when the <laughs> when there we go. Happened. Can we I get mean, a pigeon I, sent to Winnipeg and uh, we'll do this pigeon carrier style? <laughs> My God, come on, incredible! <laughs> that's amazing. So I'll just read you what uh, what he said there. Guy has flashes, but that's about it. Definitely more of a passenger than a driver. Decent at getting in shooting lanes, though, so he can play some PK. Pillsy, is he going to average more? Is he going to average more or less than the 12 minutes, 27 seconds per game he had in Chicago? Less. But, I mean, this is also a guy that he's he's playing for his next contract. He's playing for interim head coach. So, Jacques Martin isn't going to be playing too many politics here. He's just going to play whoever thinks he, whoever he thinks is deserving of the ice time. We've already seen that. He's elevated Parker Kelly before um so it, it wouldn't be that crazy if Boris Kachuk comes in here and does exactly all of those things that we got to hear Skyler talk about yeah. then <laughs> he could be elevated in this lineup and he could end up uh playing more time than he did in Chicago so we'll see Ross at least you know it's it's not much but it's it's something we can at least look at here for the Ottawa Senators as they make zero zero trades on the trade deadline day but based on the comparables that were out there, Noah Hannafin, when you're looking at Jacob Chikrin, even though Hannafin is an, excuse me, an expiring contract, then what did Matt Dumba end up going for a fifth round pick in 2027? Remember yeah. when the asking price was a first round pick for Matt Dumba? I can't thank God, Ross, that the Ottawa Senators didn't do that the four years in a row they were rumored to be going after him. That is, I, I honestly, I'm happy. Content aside, I'm happy the Sens stood pat for the reason of the prices were just brutal. Other than Dominic, I would have been so glad to move Kubalik for future considerations. Of course, but you can't Other make that, somebody no. take a, even a $1.25 million cap hit. That's not something that every single team can fit under their, their uh, cap right now. No, it's true. Well, th that's why... And Ross, the National Predators basically did all the types of moves I was talking about, getting cheap rental guys just to give their players well-deserved reinforcements. They get Dennis Giriano, they get Jason Zucker, and uh, they made one more move that I'm, that's slipping my mind right now, the Nashville Predators. But they made those types of moves where they're just giving their lineup a bit of boost for ultimately, what, a, a fifth and... Not much. I, yeah, uh, like late round picks. So I really hoped Kubelik would kind of get thrown in that mix as well, but ultimately it doesn't happen. Pilsy, you know what I did today while we were watching trade center? And uh, obviously it was kind of just a wait and see approach with the Ottawa senators. Sure. I started making our, our draft rankings table. We've got the schedule coming out where it's yep. like, Hey, so we're going to do two players a day for the top 15. And then beyond that, it'll be three players a day for the rest of the first round. And then up to four players a day for second round picks, where it's just kind of a quick synopsis of what's going on with them. But this is, this is where I'm at with 21 games remaining in the season. I'm starting to look at the list, check it twice. Some players, Tija Ginla is hilarious to me that like, that's how, uh, that's how I know I'm getting old that, yep. A guy like he was in the NHL in like the like the twenty tens. Like Aginla was a big part of our childhood watching hockey for sure, absolutely. And for for him for him and obviously the Senators' new scouting staff is going to be interesting to see what they find as the number one, number two, number three reasons why they draft players. I don't think it's going to be heart, skill, and athleticism. Left shot defenseman, Left shot defenseman as well. I mean, there, there's a ton of talent in this draft, and it sounds like the cutoff is around 20 where we're going for, like, a big drop. So okay. whether the Sens draft second, first, or anywhere in the top 10, they're going to get an elite prospect. They're going to get yeah. easily heck, the second prospect they draft with the late first-round pick 
or with their own early second, even all three of them might be after one, the two, draft, three. one, two, and three in their top prospects. Yeah, definitely. Especially right up there. with guys like Clevin probably graduating. like Right up there with Vladimir Nikitin as well. Yes, our guy, Vladimir Dude, Nikitin. Beauty. People are loving that interview. And uh, Abby Murphy was awesome too. So if you missed it yep. already, obviously it's a busy day, but check that out over the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you want to just do a classic win- winners and losers of the deadline, Ross? I've never heard of that segment before. How does it work? So how this works is we will each pick a team who we perceive to be winners of the trade deadline because what you need to do every time a trade is is uh, announced and finalized, you have to grade it and say who won or lost and then the future be damned doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm going to go and, and take the low-hanging fruit, Ross, since I'm the one that thought up of this great segment. The Vegas Golden Knights are easily the biggest winners of this trade deadline. I mean... Talk about going big game hunting. And then they pull off. Um, Elliot and Jeff Merrick always talk about this. There's always one deal near the end of trade deadline that nobody had a sniff on and nobody expected. And it ends up happening. The Thomas Hurdle deal was was that one here. Like I didn't. It's And it just seems weird to me that the Sharks decided to do this now. Like that seems like such a deadline deal. This Sharks team is going to be amazingly terrible next season. Like it's going to be impressive how bad this Sharks team is going to be. I would almost keep Will Smith in school for one more year. Like, oh we yeah. Don't, we Big don't want time. you anywhere near this. Like take your time, develop. And yeah. um, look, sh- should I be a Homer here? Like a set, like uh, obviously we got the, the Keith Kachuk Jersey back there. I'm between the two teams in the central. And that's what made me start thinking, who do you not want to play in the first round? And even like Dallas is, Dallas's sneaky deadline pickup up front was Logan Stan Coven coming up from the AHL and being like, oh, wow, I'm I'm legit. And then they yeah. added on the back end with Chris Tanev. And that's they, all they needed to do. Tanev was all they needed to do. Now, where Winnipeg already had the advantage was in goal. Yeah. Right? Who are you trusting in a playoff series, Georgiev, Ottinger, or Hellebuck? Hellebuck now, you. mind you, sure, Ottinger, down year, but he was absolutely lights out last season in the, or uh, last postseason. So there are goalies, Ross, where it's like, okay, just make it through the regular season, especially a young goalie regular season. They're not used to going through that full grind, but come playoff time, they can flip the switch and get it done. Yeah, that's fair enough. But uh, Winnipeg, if you go back a month and they gave up their first round pick, they got Sean Monaghan. He's been a great fit. And now, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 67s. They get the old teammates back together with Tyler yeah, Toffoli. True coming to the Winnipeg Jets and those two were so elite in the AHL or in the OHL together back in the day. Monahan ended up going I believe 6th overall and Tofoli was like in the mid teens in uh, in his draft year. Those two were unreal. I'm sure people in the chat were uh were watching those guys back in the day at the Civic Center and you look at what they're doing now at the NHL level. They even played a little bit together in Calgary uh before uh, Tofoli moved on. Tofoli's on his fourth Canadian team by the way and third for uh for Sean well, Monahan. And, and they mentioned uh, born, I think, in the Toronto area, GTA area, and then playing junior in Ottawa. Like, the only place he hasn't really dipped his toes in is Edmonton. Yeah, really? And maybe and they see, see him in the playoffs. Yeah, maybe they do. Wouldn't that wouldn't that be a sick second-round series? And uh, Winnipeg's right. actually done pretty well. And if you look at Winnipeg's lines, like the way that they're expected, because they've... Yeah, Winnipeg that's is, what I was going to get to. Dude, their third line is is been together all year. They're not going anywhere with Lowry, with Niederreiter, and with Appleton. Appleton, Oof. to me, you could probably flip either. Like, and even the fourth line is like it's guys who. This is what Ottawa needs to do, where you get guys that can play up and down the lineup yep. and fill roles. Brick bonus huge on different roles, but having a fourth line of Nemesnikov with Morgan Barron and Alex Iafalo is like that's a, that's a great fourth line. And then their top six, I mean, they love playing Ehlers on left wing, and that's been a bit of a topic of discussion here in Winnipeg where people want to see Ehlers on the top line. But Kyle yeah. Connor obviously has the pedigree, the goal scoring that he's there. So Shifley, Connor, Velarde, Monaghan, Ehlers to Foley. Like, that, that's a pretty solid top six. And Colorado added. So for me, it's either Colorado or Winnipeg that – wins the trade deadline because Colorado, even though they gave up Byram, they probably got um, a better fit in Sean Walker on the back end. And then we're able to use that asset 
to get another position of need at second line center. So yeah, absolutely. Now, one question I have for you, Ross, because you're dialed in on the Jets. Were you surprised that they went and used assets to pick up another forward as opposed to a defenseman? I know you had mentioned you kind of thought that they would get, uh, you know, maybe not an impact defenseman, but an extra guy just for the playoffs. Were you surprised that they just didn't go ahead and do that? Well, first, I'm I'm shocked Smitty in the chat's letting us know that the Tyler Toffoli is a second round pick. That's wild. That's a yeah. that's a great second round pick. Um, back in 2010, yeah, 47th overall. That's that's. Unreal. Thanks for the correction. I appreciate that. Um, all that to say when, uh, what was your question rather? I got sidetracked. Yeah, no worries. Um, were you surprised that the Jets used assets to pick up another forward rather than go and get a depth defenseman? Well, they got a depth defenseman right at the buzzer. Now it's like a pretty Oh, depth okay. Defenseman. I missed that. Who was it? Colin Miller. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that. So yeah, there you go. They covered all their bases there. This this Winnipeg Jets team is is poised for something big if they don't have the same injury problems they had last year in the first round. They have the best goal in the league for my money. So I think that in itself gives them a chance. Was there to win. last year too, though? Yeah, but I mean, they played the Cup champs. Yeah, nobody was beating it's Vegas fair. last year, and they it's took fair. them to to double overtime in Game Three when the series was tied one one. You yep. get a different bounce there. Could have could have been a different look, but uh, anyways, that's not how it went. Um, and if Dallas wins that division and it's going to be Colorado Winnipeg in the first round, I don't like that matchup for either no. team. I think no. that, that would just be a heavyweight battle. What would be more must watch TV though? Winnipeg, Colorado or Edmonton, Vegas. I think I got to go Edmonton, Vegas. See, I'm going Winnipeg, Colorado. I just think that would be such a, a battle. Um, obviously, what was the other one you said? Vancouver, Edmonton? No, Vegas, Edmonton. Vegas, Edmonton. Yeah, those teams have met in the playoffs before. Uh, I, like we're, I, we're, I don't want either one of those teams to be bounced in the first round. I guess I know. same with Winnipeg, Colorado, I guess. Yeah, man. Dude, the, the, the West, West is going to be nuts. Yeah, and that's why the regular season matters from here on in. Because if you're first, then you're playing in no disrespect, but you're playing teams that literally were selling off assets at the deadline if you're going to play either the Nashville Predators, potentially the Calgary Flames, if they continue to push forward, they're on a bit of a, a you know a step up despite moving on from some key guys. Even Seattle, St. Louis, those are all tied at 67 points. So it is a longer shot. Most likely Nashville, LA for me are going to be the two wildcard yeah. teams, but the difference in quality between Nashville, LA, and then looking up and seeing Vegas, Colorado, Dallas, Winnipeg, Edmonton, like, yeah, that's, I know that Va Vancouver's falling a little bit with only four wins in their last 10. However, they have won three in a row. To me, they, they've got a nine point lead right now, but Edmonton has four games in hand. And who's to say Edmonton can't win four straight? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, that's a good team there. And that's a motivated team as well as they started off this year very poorly and battled adversity and showed that they could get it done. And now, uh, they have the depth that they need up front. It all comes down to the goaltending if you're the Edmonton Oilers, in my opinion. Because Connor McDavid, he can win you one playoff series, maybe even two, but you can't rely on him uh, to have this team's back if he's carried them on his back for two series into a Western Conference final, which is going to be insane, and then a Stanley Cup final. Like He's, he's going to run out of gas eventually. Yeah. I mean, playoffs can't come soon enough. I love the Stanley Cup playoffs. The first round. We talked about this on our Patreon show where it's like, what's the best time of year? First, first round of the playoffs. So and good. Easy. And when your team's in it, makes it that much better. I'm still yeah. refreshing Twitter. I want to hear from Steve Steos. I want to hear what this guy has to say after. I don't think it's going to be very eventful. No, I, I know. And, and he does such a good job of saying a lot, but not saying anything. I guess. I hope we can get Dave Poulin on next week. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, uh, if you guys have listened along to the show for a while, we've had Pooley on at least twice, right? Or is it three twice times? Twice or three times. But he's someone who we actually both got to know a bit personally when we were at TSN, and he's just a, a really good down-to-earth guy. Yeah, and I'd like a, to, I'd like to hear from guy. Dave Pooley. And, and, Ross, he's one of those guys, too, where just the, the different experience he has is kind of unmatched in the hockey world. Like he was a player and not just any player, a 
pretty legendary player, Philadelphia Flyers captain for quite a while and put up big numbers. Uh, he, he's been a part of management. He's been a coach in the college level. He's been an analyst, uh, TSN. So like he, he's seen and done it all. So he's really able to kind of articulate his thoughts in, in a really digestible way, but also that shows you the amount of experience and knowledge that he has. And yeah, just a, a great guy as well. So if we could get Pooley on the show sometime soon, that'd be awesome. Well, the goal and just to put it out there into the world and, and hope that it works out. That's our, our target for our thousandth episode, which is happening on Tuesday. But Crazy. with the trade deadline, I knew it's so busy with him. I, I'm not going to reach out until after. So uh, if we have to postpone the festivities around the thousandth episode, so be it. But I think that with the senators in the position that they're in, I think it's all about looking to the future right now for the Ottawa senators. And it's unfortunate to say that the players at least are saying the right things. They feel like they're closer than maybe the standings and everything would tell you. But while you're down here, Pilsy, if you're at the bottom of the ocean, you may as well see something cool while you're there and come up, bring it up and show it off. So in this case, it's the uh, draft pick and that's what we're cheering for right now. That is what we are cheering for. Yep. All right, Pills, any final thoughts on this draft special? Apologies with the uh, unfortunate connections with Pistol Pete, but it was actually pretty pretty hilarious the way that we heard him until the scouting report on Boris <laughs> 2. Yeah, so good. Uh, I guess final thoughts for me, Ross, is we'll continue our thrilling segment of winners and losers. We talked about winners. Who are the losers of this trade deadline day? Ooh. Um... I'm not going to say Ottawa. It's too easy to say Ottawa. Definitely too easy to say Ottawa. Toronto. Yeah, that's one I, I was going to circle as well, Ross, because... Brad Tree Living is not a good general manager. Yeah, I don't, but also I think this is a year where the Maple Leafs are looking at themselves and they're like, this isn't our year. Like, I, I really thought last year was a better opportunity for them, and it, it was a better opportunity for them, and... I think they're just hoping that their star players can elevate them to win another playoff round and, and see where it goes from there. Cause they, they just don't have the, the full pieces to, to go deep, especially with how good other teams are here. They, they just have absolutely no draft capital to move either. Exactly. That's the thing. Like there's, wasn't a lot of options and, this was an arms race of a trades deadline a little bit, and they got off to a slow start. So I think they're just like, well, we're we're not winning this race. Let's let's not mortgage the future to try to catch up here. Yeah, because they do have those two prospects, Easton Cowan and Fraser Minton. And uh, Brad Tree Living said they were not going to include either of them in any trades. To me, it's kind of silly when you've got Austin Matthews. You should probably be trying to go for it every single year. Um, but as good as the Matthews contract is is this year at eleven point six, uh, John Tavares is is equally as bad at eleven. So. Um, those are my thoughts on the Toronto Maple Leafs who only have one draft pick in the first three rounds this year and zero in the first four rounds next year. So, um, the windows are my losers are the Leafs and the lightning because enjoy this, this last push, both of you, the windows closing, baby. I don't know if I would put the lightning as losers though. They get Matt Dumba for super cheap. They get Anthony Duclair. Like Duclair was a nice pickup. Yeah. Now, did, did they win the trade deadline? Absolutely not. But I, I don't know if I'd put them in the loser category there, Ross. No, for me, it's more so that their their window's coming to an end. Yeah. In my I mean, opinion. Everyone's everyone's time is up. The That's the, kind of the cyclical nature of sports, right? You got a cycle where it's your championship window. You build, 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 push, and then you got you to gotta hit that downturn. Uh, Unless you're Boston. Unless you're Boston. But, I mean, their time will come too, but uh, they've had – a long cycle of success here uh loser for me ross and this is kind of a minor one but just so something i'm looking at here the arizona coyotes this was not the trade deadline i think they thought they were going to have when they signed jason zucker to a one-year deal i think they're probably looking at at least at the time i'm talking about last offseason at least a second or a third round pick and then matt dumba we, we had heard kind of kind of rumors the whole time that they're they're trying to get a high pick for him as well and ultimately for trading those guys they signed to one-year deals they get a fifth round pick for uh matt dumba and then for Jason Zucker, it was a sixth round pick. So that's two UFAs on one year deals that get a fifth and a sixth. So 
obviously still the Tarasenko trade is underwhelming, but the Ottawa Senators did better with Tarasenko than the Arizona Coyotes did with Zucker and Dumba. Now Tarasenko, a better player than both of those guys, obviously, but still it's, that's not how the Arizona Coyotes probably thought this was going to go for them. Well, not only that, Billsy, like the draft pick they got for Dumba doesn't even show up on cap friendly because they only have the next three years. <laughs> yeah. A fifth like, in 2027. They're going to have to do something with all these draft picks. Uh, Mike Johnson kind of talked about it. Like you can only stockpile so many guys, like you only got so many roster spots. So they're going to have to figure out how to now turn those assets into actual players that can play for them on the ice here so yeah i, I thought that was, it's a tough day for arizona although kind of in inconsequential as they were going to move those guys no matter what it's gonna be a great race to the finish what i'll leave it at this is look we had a great trade deadline season in terms of content we had some great guests on the show um even just even the last seven days ago angus crookshank was on the show yeah. and look we had great interviews today's show with mark Mathot yesterday now it's really time to reload as we go into episode 999 on Monday. And we, we have to focus on this draft and the summer because it's not only going to be the draft, Pilsy. We're going to have a lot of content around the coaching search for the Ottawa Senators. We're going to be very interested at the couple days after the regular season and even the first round of the playoffs. Sometimes if teams have Stanley Cup aspirations, even a couple of years ago, Barry Trotz wins the cup with Washington. And then they go their separate ways. So the coaching search throughout the offseason will be very, very intriguing. And I'm looking forward to covering it with you every step of the way. We've got our boots on the ground coming up at the end of the month in Winnipeg and in Minnesota. And then at the end of the year, Pilsy and I are bringing our better halves to the CTC for a visit when they take on the Montreal Canadiens last game of the season. I just heard from the Ottawa Senators ticketing department. And we've got discounted tickets for the Sunday St. Paddy's Day game. Also known, hey, if they're celebrating Belly's birthday in Belleville, we're celebrating Pilsy's birthday in yep. Ottawa. Get your tickets. Pilsy's going to be boots on the ground. I work 4 a.m. to noon that day, Pilsy. I looked into flights. There's literally not a flight that would get me there on time. I would have done it for you, buddy. But we will be having a blast. I'm sure you will. Celebrating. I'll be watching along and following. Sends Hurricanes. We will post the link for discounted tickets to that game. Pilsy's in section 210. So if you guys yep. want to be around, have a good time, get the vibes going up. Oh, the rum and cokes will be flowing in oh, that yeah. St. Patty's Day game. So I uh, just want to say that we've got that link available. I'll post it in the comments to this video. So if you're listening to this, go check it out yep. on YouTube and get, get those tickets, baby. It's a birthday gift from me to you. It's a, it's the old reverse birthday gift. So, hey, and I just want to, the more the merrier. Let's, uh, and let's you don't want back. gifts. You don't want gifts. No, I don't, I don't want gifts. I want to give Sense fans the gift of discounted tickets. And the Carolina Hurricanes are traditionally a team that the Ottawa Senators does not do well against. So, we need all the kind of might we can get. I know we're on team tank here, but for boots on the ground, you want to see a W. So I'm, oh. I'm, I'm pushing for that big time. By the way, if they lose to San Jose tomorrow, they will be 0-13-1 in the Western Conference this season. Wild. 0-13-1, okay? So then after that game, they will only have two more games remaining against the Western Conference conference wait how does that work what do you mean oh because that no how does that work do, aren't there 16 teams in each conference yep oh yeah they'd be 0 13 and 1 with two games remaining well guess okay. what i'll take we're, your word for it we're at both those games yeah true yeah those are the last uh Western so imagine they go games. two and oh and we go two thirteen and one on the season, but we're two and zero against the Western Conference. Legendary. We're twelve zero and one boots on the ground. Anyways, appreciate everybody for joining us for this trade deadline special. Super appreciate everybody for being here all week on Locked On Senators. I don't even want to count how many hours of content we did between oh, all the postcasts, the trade reaction video, everything else. We really do appreciate everyone for riding along with us here on Twitter at Sen Central, Instagram locked on dot senators, subscribing to the YouTube page. It all really does add up and make uh make it uh what 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 should we say even more motivating rather than uh 
rather than coming in here and talking to ourselves about a team that is really struggling. So tank sends tank. I love that, Alex. Let's get some tank sends tank in the chat, ripping off the Band-Aid of another trade deadline. Thank you, Owen. Appreciate the kind words. We'll be back on Monday to kick off 1K week on Locked On Senators. That's Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. Shout out to the Martian for joining us earlier. Shout out to Skylar Peters. He will make his proper LOSP debut sooner rather than later. Great guy. Go follow him on Twitter as well. Great follow. Great dude. That's Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the trade deadline special of the Locked On Senators podcast presented by Send Central. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.